Let's go. Yeah. This is the Morning Swim Show for Monday, March 14th, 2011. I'm your host, Peter Bush, in the Finesse Monitor today with we'll Dr. Marcus Rogan. The two-time Olympic silver medalist from Austria and Stanford alum is now training at USC with Dave Salo. Marcus Rogan joins us right now in the Finesse Monitor from Los Angeles. Marcus, welcome back to the show. How are you doing? That camera, you know the webcam? It makes me a little bit like cross-eyed, I feel like. It's difficult to look at like one thing, but okay. Good morning. <laughs> Ah, good to see you too, Marcus. <laughs> Do I look cross that? <laughs> you look fine, Marcus. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, back to the interview. How's, uh, how's training with Dave Salo going? Uh, it's really hard, but, you know, I think, you know, the, the, his message is real simple. You gotta, you gotta train what you want to be ready for. And we're racing every day. It's basically like a swim meet here every day. There's, uh... There's a lot of you guys on there that have uh, some Olympic hardware. I mean, yep. geez, you guys could, uh, you guys got plenty of medals between the, the huge group of post-grad swimmers. Yeah, yeah, and they're almost all as good looking as I am, you know, it's unbelievable. But if, no, if world champs, we would have been the second best country if we had been a country. <laughs> We're pretty proud of that, yeah. You guys think maybe you could submit the paperwork to the UN. <laughs> No, and it does make it a little bit hard, you know, for world championships. We're going to have to find, like, a, like a friendly host country to all prepare at the same place. <laughs> well, uh, you mentioned training. I, I got to say, I didn't know you had this IM in you. We've always known you as just a backstroker, but you can do some breaststroke, too. Well, you know, um, as I'm getting older, I realize, you know, it's not fun to do the same uh, thing all your life, you know. Why do one if you can do four? So will you, um, first of all, you keep kind of extending your, your comeback. At first it was just going to be at the 2009, and now we're in 2011. You're still swimming and swimming very fast. Can we say for sure you're going to swim through the 2012 Olympics? Yes. Yes, I mean, it is the Olympics, you know, and I still haven't won, so I might as well try. Okay, so what are you going to try to win next year? What are the events? Uh, well, so far, I've, I've really tried the breaststroke, but that's not working at all. I mean, I, I can beat Rebecca Sonia at, th at this point, but I still got a, I still got a ways to go. So I think I, I just have the 200 I'm for now. I'm trying some freestyle. Um, I'd like, I haven't tried butterfly yet, but probably I got, I got the 200 I am. Can you beat Lochte and Phelps in the 200 I am? Um, I really thought I could beat Phelps up until this weekend. I didn't realize he was going to come back seriously, you know. I thought he was just around with his with his girlfriend. Uh, I think she's Miss California. I thought she was distracting him perfectly. But I guess she, he's serious again. Well, can you blame him? You've seen her. Hey, come on. We all go through a model uh, fornication phase. You've already gone through your model phase? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, everybody has that, you know. It's fine. And I just hoped his would last a little bit longer, but I guess he's, he's back in focus. Yeah, we, we talked to Bob Bowman, actually, on the show recently, and he said, you know, that he has flipped the switch. He is uh, focused and ready to go for 2012. So, hate to be the bearer of bad news. Eh, we'll see. I mean, personally, if I could give any advice to Michael, I would just swim the 100 freestyle, just win that, and then remain unbeaten. I think he uh, the, he's not going to get another eight, so I think he should he should just you know do one amazing thing and, and get out. The hundred, you think he could win the hundred? Hundred freestyle, sure, yeah. Well, think, hey, you've always you, you got the backstrokes now too. Pearsall's out of the mix, so yeah. you can put your toe back in that water. Oh me? Yeah. I see. I don't like backstroke. It's so like you're upside down, you're backwards. It's just I don't know. There's something about it. You do realize that's still part of the IM, though, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I saw that the other day, yeah. Like, <laughs> like a quarter of it is, is completely on your back. <laughs> uh, we digress. Hey, your, uh, your boys up at Stanford won their 30th straight Pac-10 title. Um, no, that's, that's amazing. I mean, 
none of the guys on the team were around when we started winning. You know, I wasn't around when we started winning. But the truth is, I mean, honestly, we demanded it. The one, 29 classes before before this class who won, we really expected them to win. We wanted them to win, and we kind of needed them. We put a lot of pressure on them, you know? Yeah, he called those guys and said, if you guys screw this up for us. Exactly. I mean, we're honest at Stanford, you know? But, you know, I think, I mean, you know, Great performances of today are just, you know, a big promise for the future. So I think we got to we got to get a get a good run at, at NC two A's. You know, this year I think we have a shot, but next year, especially if Austin gets another year of uh, eligibility, that could be huge next year. Yeah. All right. Let me ask you something on a little bit more serious note. Even though I do enjoy joking around with you, you're doing something with a with a school in Ethiopia, and it sounds like it's fantastic what you're doing. Tell us a little bit more. Oh, well, thanks for getting that. Well, you know, as we talked with, like, the model phase and the fun phase, I, I really spent, you know, especially after the years after the Olympic Games in 2004 of just, you know, having fun, living the high life. And after a while, I realized, you know, is that is that everything? You know, is that everything there there is there is to it? So I was looking for something uh, a little more, something that, that I don't know, was, was greater than me. And then a good friend of mine, he grew up in the, in the slums, you know, dirt poor, sleeping on the, on the ground floor, on the, on the concrete floor in, in Addis Adeba in Ethiopia. And he, uh, he got me involved with this, with this charity. At first I thought, you know, ha, I'm a celebrity, I'll work with charity, fun, good times, you know. But then I actually, I actually went there, and, you know, the, the, the greatest thing that, that happened to me there is I was, I was teaching. You know, I love to talk, so I was, I was teaching the little kids something. And uh, I, was, I was writing on the board, I was, you know, getting all excited, and they're, they're getting it, they're understanding it. It was just like, you know, in the, in the Western world, they're, you know, they're just as smart. So, uh, and then I wanted to, to wipe off the, the backboard. And I said, hey, can we, can we just make, this, make this, this towel a little bit wet so I can wipe it off? He said, well, you know, if we had any water, we'd, we'd drink it. So there I realized, you know, you can, you can do so much, you know, and you can do just, you know, just by... You know, we donated just three hundred dollars that day to buy them a huge water tank, so they'd have, uh, so they'd have something to drink during during the day. And it's it's, uh, you know, that that got us really started. Now we're we're sending teachers down there from Stanford. We're getting we're getting like a copy machine there. We're having a huge fundraiser in Austria, um, and it's it's really you know it's it's changed my life. Good for you for getting involved with that. And I understand you've uh, you've asked Mike Alexandrov to, to be a part of it as well. Yeah, no, I'm I'm really honored that uh, Mike is, is uh, going to join uh, join in, and we're going to go because you kind of have a little fun with that too. You know, we're going to go in August, and actually we uh, we have an agreement with the, the Ethiopian national team. You know, those guys are really really fast runners. They're going to run with us in the morning, and then we're going to go for a little bit of a swim. And then we're going to teach in the afternoon. Just you know, just in August, just to get ready for the Olympic season. And then actually, you know, anyone who's who has some or wants to get some teaching experience and wants to get like a real, I mean, as down to earth as it gets, preparation for the Olympic uh, years is ready and then welcome to to join. That's really cool. Yeah. And what no, is um? We'll put something up on the website, but uh, tell us uh, what's the name of the school or where can people. You know, if they're inclined to donate or something like that, check it out. It's it's called Tesfaye, which means my hope in Amharic. Amharic is a local language. Tesfaye is spelled T-E-S-F-A-Y-E. And the website is just tesfaye.at, for A-T is for Austria. And it's it really just means my hope, because cause there, you know, we all start, no matter where we're born. If we're born in, in you know, the rich suburbs around here of Beverly Hills, or in the slums of Addis Ababa, we we all start with with hope and that's that's what what carries us that's what can really can carry us well marcus good luck with that and good luck with swimming this summer we'll talk to you down the road thanks a lot i appreciate this opportunity all right that's marcus rogan very interesting guy joining us here on the morning swim show and that is it for today's show i'm peter bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish